Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Slash687 here, back at it again with another PC build guide video for you today. But first, I'd like to formally thank you all for 5,000 subscribers. It's a big milestone for me and I reached it way quicker than I thought I was going to, so I really appreciate it. But let's get into the video. So the links for all these parts are going to be in the description, except for the graphics card, which is sold out pretty much everywhere, but once it is back in stock, you should see a link there. And the links are my Amazon affiliate links, so if you use them, I do get a small kickback of the price of the item, and it does help out the channel a lot. But let's get into the list. Starting off with the CPU, I have the Intel Core i7-6800K. It is a Skylake series 6-core CPU. It's the first 6-core uh, CPU we've seen based on the Skylake architecture. It's clocked at 3.4 GHz in turbos up to 3.6. It does support DDR4. It is based on that 14 nanometer process you expect from the Skylake architecture. Does support hyper-threading and uses a fairly low amount of power at 140 watts. This thing's going to be great for overclocking using the cooler that I also paired it with. And overall, you're getting a very high quality 6 core CPU that's going to last you well into the future as far as gaming is concerned. And to cool this beast, I went with the Corsair H100i liquid CPU cooler. It's an all in one loop using a 240 millimeter radiator and 2700 RPM fans. This thing is ridiculous. You're going to be able to overclock to the moon and back using this cooler. It's one of the highest rated uh, liquid CPU coolers. So overall, definitely a very good deal here to overclock our 6800K. And on top of that, it's not too noisy. Uh, it's only 37 decibels. So definitely not going to be a problem as far as noise is concerned and as far as cooling is concerned. Next up for the motherboard, I want the Gigabyte GAX99 SLI ATX motherboard. It is based on the Socket 2011, so it's going to support our CPU. It supports up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. It does support four-way SLI, has eight SATA 6 gigabit per second ports, and uh, USB 3.0. So overall, you're getting a full-sized ATX motherboard with pretty much all the features you could possibly want. And it's going to support our CPU, it supports DDR4, it supports SLI. There really isn't much more that you could ask for with this motherboard. It also has great ratings, and it's made by Gigabyte, a pretty reputable brand for motherboards. So, can't go wrong with this one. For the RAM, you're probably used to seeing this. I went with the G-Skill NT Series 16 Gigabyte kit of DDR4, clocked at 2133 MHz. 16 gigabytes is really all you're going to need as far as gaming is concerned for a very long time. 16 gigabytes is also pretty cheap. It's only $53 right now for 16 gigs of DDR4. That is pretty crazy when you think about it. RAM used to be just so expensive and it's just dropping and dropping. So uh, for only $53, you're getting 16 gigabytes of very high quality, uh, not very frilly, just basic RAM that's going to do what it needs to do. For the storage, I went with an SSD HDD combination. Starting off with the SSD, I went with the Samsung 850 Evo series 500 gigabyte SSD. Um, it's very cheap in comparison to the 950 series drive. So uh, for um, only $150, you're getting a 500 gigabyte uh, SSD when compared to the 950 series, you'd probably have to pay that much to get a 250 gigabyte SSD. So as far as value goes, these 50 series are the way to go. They have great ratings, great speeds, and overall 500 gigabytes is a very good amount of SSD storage. You can store all your favorite games, all your favorite programs, your OS, and a lot more on 500 gigabytes of SSD storage. Very good deal right here. For the hard drive, I'm with the Seagate Barracuda 3TB 7200 RPM internal hard drive. For only $82, you're getting 3 terabytes of storage. That's just crazy. It's a very good price for a capacity that large. It's going to last you a very long time as far as games are concerned. You can also store tons of pictures, music, and anything else you possibly want to store. For $83, 3 terabytes, very good deal here from Seagate, and they are known to make some pretty darn good hard drives. Next up for the GPU, you guys have been asking for this forever in a build. I finally have a Pascal GPU in one of these PC build guides. I want the EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 8GB super clocked 
ACX 3.0 video card. This thing is amazing for the money. For $650, you're getting performance better than Titan X and rivaling a 980 SLI setup. Overall, for the money, it's just an amazing GPU. Based on the 16 nanometer process, it's just very small, very power efficient, and overall an amazing video card. It's a very compelling value right now, and I'm sure once they're readily available, people will be snatching them up left and right. So very good deal right here with a 1080. Next up with a case, I went with a Corsair 750D full tower case. This thing is amazing for cable management, just very large case. Obviously it's full tower, a nice side window in there so you can peek in. And as far as designs go, I really love the look of this case. Uh, it's kind of similar to the uh, Corsair 200R in the way. It's just simple and wonderful and overall great for cable management and for airflow. And it's just a great case. I really do love this case. And I definitely recommend it for building this system. Lastly, the power supply. I went with the EVGA 850 watt, 80 plus gold, fully modular power supply. This thing's great for cable management. Obviously, it's fully modular. You can move around the cables as you see fit, take out what you need to take out, and it's going to be easy to make the cables look very nice. It's 80 plus gold certified, so it's going to be efficient, and 850 watts of power is going to be plenty for this build. It's made by EVGA, and they're a very reputable brand as far as power supplies go. So that's going to wind up the build. We come to a total of around 2,000. Uh, maybe a little bit cheaper. Um, so overall, definitely a very good PC. $2,000, that's going to be at the top of the budget for me. I'm going to go back to uh, $100 after this and work my way up as far as the PC build guides go. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like rating. Be sure to comment if you have any questions. And the wonderful men and women in the Slash Think Tank will help you out. We'll solve the world's problems. We'll build PCs like madmen. And if you're new, be sure to click that subscribe button. Be sure to follow me on Snapchat if you'd like. There should be a little code that you scan coming up right now. So scan that if you want. And be sure to use my Amazon affiliate links if you would like to help support the channel. You can buy pretty much anything. There's a link that'll just take you right to the site. And I'll get a kickback. I really appreciate that. I hope you all have a great night. And I'll see you all later. Peace.